week on Detroit Lions Free Agency Wars. Another week of Lions Free Agency has officially hit the books. So with another week of Free Agency out, let's take a look and see how this week's Honolulu Blue Brigade has, fa has fared. Also, also thanks to the Lions, um, they hooked... They hooked a lot of fans up with some of these backgrounds that you see on the screen here, like this one with Stafford throwing the some bitch over to Kenny G. You know, for anyone that wants to use it for conference calls or any fit makers that like to have backgrounds for their videos. So yeah. Um shout out to the Lions, you know, for um hooking up hooking all of us up with some backgrounds for all of that stuff. So yeah, thank you for that. Really appreciate it. So yeah, the budget gets increased for Detroit Lions free and sea wars. But anyway, Let's jump in the free agency and see how the Lions fared this week. So after the first two weeks of free agency, ev everything's starting to die down a bit. Like, the free agency pool is pretty much withered down. Like, there's not that many big-name free agency le agents left, so all it is now from here on out is just trying to add depth for the roster. For the Lions receiving core, they did get a solid addition to the depth. Wide receiver Geronimo Allison from the Green Bay Packers. A one-year deal worth $910,000. What the fuck? That was odd. I'm not sure how the hell my beer set off my pencil sharpener there. That was pretty fucking weird how that happened. Like, my beer was literally just standing there minding its own business. And then all of a sudden it triggered my pencil sharpener without, even, without me moving it at all. That's pretty weird how that worked. But, huh. but yeah, anyway, as I was saying, you know, very solid addition for Geronimo. Pretty cheap, too, at $910,000. So, yeah, pretty cheap deal. So, yeah, pretty solid addition. And keep in mind, Geronimo was, like, the number two wide receiver on the Packers. So, on the depth chart here, he'll be battling for, I think it's the Maybe around the fourth or fifth spot on the Lions depth chart for the wide receiver position. So yeah, it'll be a change in scenery. Plus with Green Bay, he Geronimo moment we got pushed out because Green Bay had a lot of younger receivers in the system over Geronimo. So Geronimo became the odd man out in Green in Lambo. But hey, welcome to the squad. That's gonna be a solid addition, another weapon for Stafford to throw to this season. So yeah, very solid acquisition. Also for the Lions this week, the Lions also decide that they still need to address their secondary and still try and get some defensive backs to try and fill the void that's left by Darius Slay. After Slay was traded to the Eagles a few weeks ago, honestly, we needed to get Slay gone, like I mentioned time and time again. The Lions were able to make another solid acquisition for depth, signing former defensive back from the Jets, Daryl Roberts, to a one-year deal, around a one million, two million, so... Another solid one-year contract, another debt piece. Of course, um, Daryl Roberts, a former seventh-round pick from the New England Patriots. The last four years he's played for the Jets. He's played 56 games for the Jets the last four years. Um, the last two years, he's Daryl Roberts has started in 10 games for the Jets the last two years each. So yeah, that's 10 games a season. But yeah, overall for his career so far, Roberts has had 172 tackles and three interceptions. So he's someone that can really, and a lot of his tackles come before they can even get to the, before the ball carrier can get to the first down line. So yeah, someone that sort of knows Patricia's defensive scheme. Maybe a little adjustment, but okay. You know, for, yeah, but for this acquisition, it's just a depth piece. It definitely doesn't rule out Jeff Okuda. Okuda is still 100% on the board. Same deal with Simmons. I still feel like Simmons is on the board. So yeah, in terms of those two, no fork on either of them. So yeah, that's where we stand with the draft pick so far. Also now with um, with pretty much free agency really starting to die down now, it seems like everybody's now putting more focus and attention on the draft now. Especially this week, now that a lot of the NFL teams have started to reveal their 2020 NFL draft caps. It's going to be interesting how they get the draft caps to the to the players that the teach team drafts. I think they're just going to mail mail all the hats to one player, and then they'll just give the player the hat of the team they draft. Anyway, up on the screen right above here, right in the middle of Stafford throwing the pigskin to Galladay, is the Detroit Lions draft cap for 2020. 
It's an all black cap. Actually, not a bad looking cap. It's actually really good too. And on the side, it says Motor City Football. And of course, if you as you see here, I'm wearing um last year's NFL draft cap. Of course, it's the one that has the nickname C Rat on the side. Honestly, honestly, out of all the Lions draft caps I've seen, I've honestly preferred this one more. You know, it's a better, nice looking one. I actually got um the Lions one from 2018. Also, the blue one that says One Pride on it. And yeah, really, that's about it. And in the inside, it says uh, defend the den. So yeah, overall, solid caps. Not gonna solid hats. Not gonna lie. Like, you know, really solid hat. Um, the problem is though, if you want to get your local stores, guess what? Too bad, because oh no, because because you know hats would pretty much fall under non-essential business stores like the hat stores, like lids and shit. And guess what? Those type of stores are closed right now due to COVID-19 happening. Since the only businesses that are open are the essential businesses like the Walmarts and all your grocery stores and hardware stores and shit. And I guess fast food restaurants that only do drive through or take out only. Just to give you an idea here. So yeah, your only hope of getting this hat right now. Guess that means you have to go over to Fanatics or NFL Shop to the line section to figure it out. If anyone's wondering, um, for Fanatics, um, no, for Fanatics, um, the only section that they suspended operations for is MLB for the mask and gowns. For I know, um, NFL, NHL, and NBA, I think they're still making merch for those sections, too. I know for sure they're still doing NASCAR merch because I had two pit shirts coming the other day. And I had a race winner shirt from a couple weeks ago that finally came in the mail today. And pretty good timing also. Not bad. From a race that happened a month over a month ago. If anyone's wondering there. So yeah. And honestly, I think I may wait off until this COVID shit blows over before buying the hat. I don't want to have to buy it online and pay, have to pay duties and taxes. Because it's fucking ridiculous. I do have a code though where I can get free shipping for it too. And I also have a few on Fanatics fan cash left that I can use to get off on the hat. Oh no, going to be an interesting call. I'm probably just going to wait. Plus, I have like over a fucking million Detroit Lions at Detroit Sports at all over my room. Like, I got a fucking ton of hats in here. Like, if I did I had to do a hat collection video, it would have to be a long one. That just gives you an idea on how many hats I have. It's just a, so many hats, man. Also, real quick for everyone here, the NFL did provide an update, though, on... The start of the SC season. Is the season going to be starting on time? Or is it going to be delayed due to the COVID-19 outbreak? And the fact that now the United States leads the entire world in most coronavirus cases. The good news is, U.S., you're not leading that whole world in, in coronavirus-related deaths. I think USA is like four, has the fourth most deaths in the world for a country due to COVID-19. I think they're either third or fourth on the list. I'm not sure if they're ahead of China now. I know for sure Spain is second and Italy is number one. But yeah, USA leads the whole entire world in most coronavirus cases. But yeah, anyway, to the big question. Is it going to be delayed or started? Well, NFL says at the moment, the season this is still expected to start on schedule. I mean, we still have plenty of time to figure a plan out for this. Since um, the season doesn't start until September, and right now we're at the start of April. Like, the season doesn't start for another five months. See, as you see here, one of their most recent posts. Also in this post, we find out when the new 2020 schedule is going to be released. Which will be May 9th, which is around two weeks after the draft. And it's going to be released. It's They're saying it's going to be released no later than May 9th. So it's looking like it's going to be released after the draft. So yeah, this also reveals some of my schedule prediction ideas coming up. Because normally the schedule gets released a week before the draft. And during that time, I usually do at least two schedule predictions each year. You know, one before the draft and one after the draft. But from the looks of that post here, it looks like it's only going to be after the draft. So it's looking like I'm only going to be doing one schedule prediction this year. And it will be after the draft. Which, which the one after the draft is the more important one. So yeah, that's going to be a very interesting one. 
Um, all I know is that all I know is that there's only one Lions game we know of for sure on the schedule. The only game we know for sure that has been announced um is um the the game November first, which is I think is week nine or week ten, when the Lions face the Jacksonville Jaguars over in England. Yes, for the first time in five years, the Lions will have a game across the pond in London, England. Um, and actually, for that game, um, some of you may be shocked to hear this, but I actually have the Lions losing to the Jaguars that game. I honestly feel that game's going to be a big-time trap game. Because cause keep in mind, next year the Jaguars will be playing two games in England. Both of them are back-to-back. -back. So if the Jaguars are smart and stay in England for that extra week, the Lions will be at a big-time disadvantage, you know, from the jet lag... You know, changing time zones, flying to a different country across the pond. I feel like that's going to be a game the Jaguars are going to take advantage. I actually have that as the game the Lions are supposed to win, and they're going to end up finding a way to lose. I just think that's a massive trap game for the Lions across the pond in England. Like, that game's going to be a trap for sure. Like, we don't even need to have the draft or even have a practice to know that the Lions-Jaguars game in England is going to be a trap game. No doubt. So yeah, we have that there. So at least you know for sure that there's at least one loss on my schedule predictions. You at least know one loss for sure. So yeah, if anyone's thinking I'm going to be delusional and go 19-0, and nope. Not this time, motherfucker. So yeah. Of course, I'm for the of course, it's also been revealed that the NFL is going to have to do some testing though before they can do any um, games. I imagine the NFL is going to do that. Like they have five months, they have plenty of time to get whatever they need done. Uh, one scenario I could see for the season starting on time is I could I do see a scenario where the NFL could go the first week or two with no fans in attendance if they have to. I imagine if the NFL needs to, they will do that. Well, I'll say this here. By September, we're all going to need football with sports being ground zero. We're all going to need NFL football. No doubt. Like, at some point, we need to have normalcy back in our lives. At some point. And they, we need to get this shit back on track, especially now that the stock market's completely plummeting down the shitter. So, yeah. For if anyone's wondering, um... If, this, if, if the season is going to be delayed or not. Right now, it's expected to still start on schedule at the start of September. I mean, we have five months. We don't know what this COVID-19 is going to do in the next five months. You know, it could blow over. It could get worse. We'll have to wait and see. Play it by day. So, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap it up here for this short week of Detroit Lions Free Agency Wars. Not much happened to Free Agency. Not much really any drama or negativity in media, too. Well, except for Mike Valente's reign of bullshit on 97 won the ticket. You want my thoughts on it? I really do not give a damn about Valente. Valente's a goddamn idiot. He's a fucking clout chaser trying to get a paycheck in these tough times. Like, I heard about his recent mock draft, though, the other day. Or in this mock draft, he thinks that Joe Burrow is falling to the Lions at three. All I have to say to Fuente is how much fucking crack was he smoking before he made that mock draft? Is he really that fucking high? Kids, this is why you don't do drugs. Because when you do drugs, you don't think straight. Alright kids, don't do drugs. You'll end up as much of a fucking idiot as Mike Valente is. I'll say that much. Like, seriously, what kind of fucking drugs do you have to be on to think Joe Burrow is falling to the Lions at three? We already know Burrow is going to the Bengals at number one. It is all but a all but a given here. Hell, there was even uh, it was even like back in like what, January? When you know, uh, Fuente was saying that the Lions need to go with Tua with the third pick, and he kept um, downgrading Okuda and Simmons. And then we had um, the caller that came in and called that called Fuente and said that drafting Tua with the third pick with his broken hip and all, with his glass hip, would be a dumbass move for the Lions. And during that call, Fuente then walked out on the caller, showing how unprofessional he is. 
Yeah, the irony. The last couple of years, Fuentes talked about how the Lions have been unprofessional. And yet, he showed how unprofessional he was when he walked out on a caller. Fuente is a goddamn hypocrite and a goddamn fucking snowflake bitch. He can di Fuente can dish the criticism, but he can't take it. He can dish the criticism, but he can't take it. Yeah, it's fucking ironic that Fuente called the lines unprofessional and then he acts unprofessional too to a caller. For voicing his opinion, for a caller voicing their opinion on it to Fuente. Funny how life comes at him fast. Like, honestly, I don't even want to waste my time with this Fuente shit. And I don't even want to rant on it because it's so fucking stupid and I'll lose fucking brain cells on it. And honestly, me wasting time on it, I would have to probably go on a second Bud Light for it. What, you thought, oh what, you thought because I had a drink there, you thought some drama was going to show up on screen? Not this time. Not today. So yeah, that's my just my thoughts on the whole Mike Fuente thing, my quick rant. Because I really don't give a damn about this Fuente shit. I really don't listen to his fucking shows. Only way I know is if some guys fucking tag me and then ask my thoughts on it and I take a look. My like, god damn it. Just lead me to hell out of this Fuente shit. Fuente's a fucking idiot. I don't want to waste time with his dumb ass. If you want me to talk about a fucking Detroit analyst, give me someone that's that. Give me. If you want me to rant about a Detroit sports analyst, give me one that's actually worth my fucking time. Don't give me dumb asses like Mike Fuente, for fuck's sakes, people. You want me to rant about a Detroit sports analyst? Give me one that's worth my time. Like, give me a real fucking analyst, not Mike Fuente. That's what I say. Give me a real analyst. Not some fake-ass clout chaser. But yeah. Fuck Mike Valente. He's fucking trash. But real quick, though, without out of the way, I will discuss the Lions draft situation. Here's how I think it's going to go. Um, I don't think Chase Young's falling to the Lions at three. I think Chase Young is going to the Redskins at two. The Redskins would have to be fucking idiots to pass on Chase Young. So for the draft situation, here's how I see it going. Um, with the Lions trade down, I only see two teams that could possibly trade down with the Lions, that could trade up with the Lions. The two teams I think that if the Lions trade down, it's either going to be with the Dolphins or the Chargers. I think it's down to those two. So the Lions will either fall back to fifth or sixth. I honestly think a lot of people want it to be the Dolphins because the Dolphins got three first-round picks, and that means we could get an additional first-round pick, too. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. So for the draft situation, I think that the Lions stay at three. I think the pick's going to be Simmons. If the Lions trade back to fifth or sixth, I think, the pick, I think if they trade back, I think the pick's going to be Okuda. Simply because if the Lions trade back, Simmons is going to be gone at four. I think I think the Lions trade back. Simmons will be get taken by the Giants. And here's why I think the Giants would take Simmons at four. For the simple fact that now the Giants and Dave Gettleman are now in a get your shit together ultimatum because their reports came out that Dave Gettleman has only one more year to turn the Giants around or he's fired. Yeah, originally though. Originally, I thought the Giants were going to go offensive linemen. I think if the Lions take Simmons at three, I think the Giants may then go offensive linemen to give Daniel Jones some protection. But I think with the Lions trade back, then I think the Giants would go with Isaiah Simmons. So yeah, if the Lions stay at three, I think the pick will be Simmons. If they trade back to fifth or sixth, I think the pick will be Okuda. I'll be honest here, um, I want the pick to be Simmons, but I feel like it's gonna be Okuda. I won't be mad if I won't be mad if we get Okuda. I understand it. I mean, out of both picks, Okuda would be the safer pick. Considering that um Bob Quinn always likes to pay to play the safe pick in the drafts every year. And Okuda would be the safest pick because it does address a massive need for a defensive back. You know, we get someone to take Darius Slay spot. So, yeah, that's where I stand with that. 
But yeah, anyway, as I'm wrapping this video up, I also just got word that all the draftees for the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft are going to be greeting Roger Goodell virtually. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see you know, how they pull the draft off this year. Since the draft will be happening um, April 23rd to 25th. That entire weekend schedule. So, yeah. And, of course, um, I'm also still doing the mock, my um, draft previews, of course. You know, I just had a draft preview uploaded um, earlier today. I'll have another one uploaded tomorrow since now I'm doing uh, four mock drafts a week. With the draft quickly approaching. Um, I think I have, like, around five more mock, um, not five mocks. Um, I have five more draft previews left to do. And then, always, like I said for sure, um, around the week before the draft, I'll have my official mock draft up video up for who I think the Lions will take in this year's draft. So, yeah, you got that much. You say you got some draft previews coming up to look forward to. But, yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say, folks. That's going to wrap it up here for another episode of Detroit Lions Free Agency Wars. A little bit shorter than previous weeks. But, yeah, that's all I got to say. Hope everyone's a great day, and, yeah, peace out.